Okay, I'm ready to. I'm ready to do it. Um, yeah. Hey, everybody, how you doing? I re I just realised I recorded the bit where I was like, I'm ready to do it. Yeah, I just recorded that <laughs> on the video. Oh, keep keep gonna, that in. Of course, I'm going to keep it in. I'm, I've changed it. Hey, everybody, hey, oh, are we ready? How are we ready? Doing, are we ready? Are we, yeah, no, we we recording now. The video's already started. Oh, okay. Started the hey, first everybody. time. I said. I think we're ready. To, I'd already hit record. So we're now 24 seconds in and said nothing. Hello, everybody. Bonjour tout le monde. Je m'appelle uh, Jean-Michel. Can you do that in Trig, please? Um, bienvenue de... Can we... No, Mon... no French. Trig, not French. Also like one crew. And this one like also yeah. how. There you go. <laughs> okay. That's good. Like, that's going to confuse everyone that watches this. And there'll be one person that goes, I get that. Get that reference. There's going to be one person in a thousand who goes, Yeah, yeah, get that, yeah, good for me. That one, uh, that one person's going to be a 12 year old girl like us. <laughs> I love the fact that we know we have the same taste, and we should probably get to the video anyway. Um, <laughs> hang on, what should we what? at some point in the future? I think we should do a video about the hundred and why it's awesome. Okay, we, cool, we okay, should queue up next. Um, so, uh I write a website. I have a website, don't I, Drew? Um, oh, you have a website? Which is hexdsl.co.uk, right? Um, which mm -hmm. I'm currently struggling to find. There you go. I have hexdsl.co.uk, which is this website here where I have a beautiful picture of Lenart Pottering, who's not in the least bit controversial. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have, and I do, and on this website, I write posts of my mind, like a live journal or like, or like some kind of like episodic story about my life and my activities you can't, you I, can't say live journal that's that's trademarked is it I, can, I mean yeah. i can say it surely you can say i think you say you can say the word live journal with a space but you can't yeah. say live journal i can't say live journal okay um i don't want i'm trying to avoid using the word blog because i think it's an unreasonable word but uh, yeah I, uh, I make a what word blog. blog what does that mean uh web log was the etymology of the word blog the web like, log. A, like a tree log like a yeah, like, like a, a trunk I guess, of tree. I guess. Anyway, yeah. so uh, I make this blog here, and uh, I, I have I have things like I'll write an article. I say article, an, an entry, um, and yeah, it all it all it all it's all fine, right? Um, but I've been having some problems generating this because I don't want to I, I don't want to use a system on my website that is uh, that is like a like, like WordPress or Jekyll. I just want HTML, right? I just want to do some HTML. And I just want to be able to write some markdown and just make it into a blog entry, right? Uh, and I've had some problems doing that. And I was using a solution called LB, which I didn't like uh, because of the source. Um, uh, but I couldn't find an alternative that was better. And then Drew um, just got bored the hello. other night. Uh, hello. This is Drew, by the way. Hello, Drew. Uh, Drew got bored the other night and made a solution. He's called it Blop. Um, and it's called Blop for very intelligent reasons, wasn't it, Drew? Yes. Uh, it's an acronym. Is it? Is it an acronym? Uh, it's it's for blop lies on top of people. Yeah, so Drew just thought the word blop out of thin air and did this. And what blop does, it allows you to post, it allows you to make, uh, to basically to make blog entries easily without, you know, without any, any pre-existing knowledge. So I'll show you how that works. Um, I've just realized I'm probably in the wrong folder. Uh, uh, there you go. Uh, so now, if so I've got, an, I've got a folder here called Markdown, a folder called Posts. So go into the Markdown folder, and I edit. Say, for instance, I edit. Um, this is a test blog, right? You can see there. I've written this just in very, very easy Markdown. Nothing exciting. And then I run the Blop script, uh, which turns that Markdown into HTML, and it injects an entry into my index, uh, my index template. And then essentially generates a static site with it. Um, and you can see that if you go into the post directory, um, uh, the, yeah, if we, we actually see it, go into the post directory. Um, you can go into, there you go. Uh, oh, I want to vim that, not cd into it. Uh, I forget it's type right now. You can see that it generates <laughs> HTML for this, uh, which is the exact same text as the, uh, the markdown with a bit of a header and a few usual HTML things you have to do. Um, but yeah, basically, you can make uh, a website such as the one I'm about to show you, which is the demo, the demo website that Drew's made. So there's the demo website with a bunch of demo posts is made, um, as well as an archive page showing you more of the posts is made by date. Um, you can go into any of those, and yeah, they all say, oh, there's a few that have text, but most of them say this is a test post. So Drew, what did you do? Do you want to tell people what it is? Do you want to explain better than me? Or I mean, do it? if you're familiar with Jekyll, yeah. uh, 
Imagine that, but it does far, far, far less and doesn't make you use Ruby. But uh, when you say far, far less, most people yeah. who are using Jekyll are using 1% of it anyway, aren't they? From what I yeah, understand. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Because Jekyll's got quite advanced yeah. templating yeah. and you can pull things in. So, I mean, uh, I mean, we could start from first principles about why dynamic sites are for most most uses bad, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, when you, if you, so if you visit a blog... Mm -hmm. Uh, every time, and it's it's using something dynamic in the background like WordPress. So every time you visit the index page, the that blog, you know, the PHP script on the server is going and asking the database what are all the posts, like what order they are they in, you know, and built just all this information coming from the database, and it's dynamically assembling this HTML on the server side, putting it all together, and then showing you that that page, right? Uh, and that page is being dynamically assembled. You know, there's some caching going on and stuff. There's some clever stuff. But basically, in basic terms, that 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 that, that, that page, that index page, and each individual blog page is being dynamically assembled from bits and bobs in the um, database every time anyone looks at that page. Um, and say you post one blog post a week, and you get like a hundred visitors a day. That's a hundred yeah. times you're you're generating this page when really. That, that that whole site is only changing once a week or you know once yeah. a, however however on you post and that's stupid <laughs> really bad way to use resources so a few years ago people you know realized that's kind of stupid so they started doing static site generators which is where you you know you create the site uh, you edit your post or whatever you make a new post and then you just generate the site a static html once and then whenever everybody visits the site, they're just getting that static HTML until the site changes. You only generate, you only regenerate the site when you or add content change. or change content, which makes sense, right? Yep. For most things, it makes uh, sense. For most things, it makes sense. Uh, you lose the ability, you lose some of the dynamic ability to, you know, let me see all posts by this writer or let me see all posts written at, you know, I mean, these two dates or searching, you know, you can't, you can't do things that databases are good if, at. If you want to take comments, you're going to have to use some, a plugin like uh, yeah, is it Discourse, yeah. the plugin for comments that people use. Yeah, yeah. 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 But point, I mean, right. most of the time, you know, how often on a blog do you search? You know, is, is that really, you know, yeah. blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I think so for a lot of things, for, for a simple blog site, static is better. Uh, so then, like Jekyll came along, and, and Jekyll's really cool. I actually really like Jekyll, but it's quite advanced. Like you can do some quite advanced templating to the point where you can do a lot of what the dynamic sites are doing. Like you can have, you know, a next post button, which is harder to do with my thing. I could do it, but you know, I'm not going to bother. Um, so this is this is Jekyll with like very very minimal templating. All you can really do is do, it has um it has a field for uh, the author, the date, uh, the title. So you can put those anywhere you want in the post listing. And then on the page, on the post itself, it's got, you know, post data. You can choose where that goes. But you basically, so but it's, it works based on templates. So you've got a template for your index um, page. And if you just slot in a post list as an HTML comment, it will replace that with the post list and then generate an index HTML. Mm -hmm. And for the individual post pages, the same thing. You just put the post data wherever you want. To, you design your HTML yourself. And then you just put the post data tag wherever you want that. And then it will just. You know, generate generate the pages for you. Yeah, um, I'm just showing the template. Did it explain anything, or did it just ramble? No, no. I think I think you did explain. I mean, it's a hard time. I mean, anyone watching this video, um, and they got past the opening two minutes where we talk shit anyway, um, <laughs> would probably be here to look for to look for this sort of stuff, right? So, uh, when I yeah. go to when I go to index template here, I'm right on the screen now. I'm going to the index template on the demo site you set up. And you can see on the template there, there's this comment here where it's literally post list like exclamation point dash post this is a comment right uh, and then you when you go into the uh, the actual index file that, that it's going to be served up to the audience to the to, to the people that click on the site you can see here this is the stuff that it inserted right here i've blocked off now so wherever that is it inserts that and as you said to me uh, earlier when you was explaining how it worked it generates this every single time like every single mm -hmm. time you run it it generates this um, mm -hmm. So all you do to set it up, if you want this on your website, um, and a good ex an example here is on my website here. Um, all this stuff here, uh, I'm just highlighting it now. If people, all this stuff here, uh, this section here has been generated, has been inserted by the uh, by the blob script there. So I, the rest is my normal website, and I've just, I've just basically just this bit here gets edited. And then if I want to edit anything on the uh, on the index HTML, I edit the template, and that gets rolled in every time I regenerate a new blog. But if you want to so use it. In terms sure. of how you use it, you just yeah. In the you, there's a Markdown folder. You create a new Markdown document, which is the content of your blog post. 
uh, and then you run the script. Uh, it loops through what's in the Mockdown folder, makes HTML files out of all of that, yeah. you know, and then creates the list and then links those to the right place. Yeah. So it's it's very dumb. It's not doing anything clever, and it does every previous post you've made. It does regenerate those every time you run it. Uh, and the reason I made that decision is I just uh, you could I could have a database of some kind, even you know just a text file database or whatever, keep track of what's been generated, what's not. But I think that would make it a I don't I don't like having a database. I don't want a database with this. And secondly, um, a and secondly, secondly, uh, I think this is more flexible because if you want to say if you wanted to delete a post, but this this thing's also databasing, then you've got to delete it and make sure it's deleted out of the database and maybe rejig well, some things well, to keep yeah, it all this working. Way you can delete the markdown, then rerun it. Delete the MD file, and it's gone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, to set this up on your own website, so if you want this on your own website, first of all, you have to uh, take your existing index HTML and rename it to index template and insert that line of that that one line we've just talked about where you want the blogs to go. You're also going to need a URL.txt which just contains the URL for the website. Um, yeah, I assume that's that's used for generating the links. I take it, yeah. That's just for the RSS. The RSS needs an absolute link back to your site. So yeah. that's just for the RSS. Yeah, there's no yeah. way of deriving that obviously. We also need an RSS template file, which is again available here. Um, and then uh, and then I think oh, you need the archive template as well now, don't we? Um, so you got you so you got the files you need are archive template HTML, index template HTML, RSS template HTML. Oh, and the post template HTML as well. Um, and the post template is yeah, literally very straightforward stuff, and then it just puts the post in that chunk there. yeah on the on the test blog there's like very simple versions yeah. of all those files that you can just take and you know yeah, do your own thing have with. you not have you thought about rolling them into the uh rolling them into the uh the blob git that will make blocks i think i didn't want to keep files. it separate separate yeah. because i think that just would be i think yeah they hit, hit like here's the tool here's an example blog so yeah, you yeah, can take so, these well, i mean that's how i put it together and it was it wasn't difficult to put it together i was like yep yeah like, no problem. I've, yeah. I've rolled if you, out. if you literally just make a dot HTML file with just the tags in it, nothing. You don't even need any HTML. Just the yeah. tags in it. That would work. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, I mean, I set it on two websites. Um, I, I set it up on uh, I set it up on Pixel Fridge and HexDSL.co.uk, and it's working flawlessly on both. And I just running, and I've got the blob file, the actual script itself, in my bin directory, so it doesn't have to exist in the same folder as the uh, t as the uh, as the actual website, which I didn't realize that he's pointed out, which is nice. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Um, it does everything I want it to do. It generates the RSS, generates an archive. Uh, it puts the post in there, and I can just write my post in Markdown. Um, the actual posts themselves don't need to be particularly clever. Like uh, if I uh, if I go into my Markdown directory, let's make it so people can see what's happening here. Um, if I go into my Markdown directory, uh, and I vim, uh, yeah. So if I vim, uh, so I read his blog I wrote earlier. I just there's nothing in here. There's no header in here other than I, I put the word smug at the top in code tags. But you know that's you know you need here nor there. But I just start writing at the top. I don't even need to do a title. It takes the title itself from the file name and it replaces dashes or underscores with spaces. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So you use dashes or underscores. Doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, th I think a file name with spaces would work as well. I think I think I've protected it from choking on spaces. I'd probably uh, be inclined to use dashes anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't like I don't like file name spaces. Yeah. Um, but if you do want a fancy title with like emoji in it or something, and you're not sure whether that will work as a file name. You can override you can override the title and the author by putting a little uh, snippet at the top of the H of the markdown. So you can write override those two things. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and that's uh, described on the uh, that's described right here where you talk about how you do that. Where you talk about how you do that. Um, yeah, you, do, uh, yeah, you talk about this right here, towards the bottom. Yeah. But you do that, and it overwrites it, so you can have. My, yeah. my instructions are a bit rambly, but you know, it's it's kind of like you can work it out yourself, probably. Yeah, I mean, would I mean I, I first I read all this because um, I set it up blind because you, you literally was like, I've done this thing for you. You passed me the link, and then you went to bed. So uh, I, <laughs> yeah. I I literally like looked. I didn't have any. I couldn't contact you to ask questions. So I I read through all this, and then I looked at the script. And then I just went to the example blog. And I feel like the example blog you've set up is like very much part of the tutorial. So it has all the stuff. Yeah. Like it shows yeah. you how the implementation works. And that's really nice. It's yeah. just, it's real good. It all does that now, which is, which is nice. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically what we just wanted to make you guys aware of. Um, yeah. yeah if you want, uh, what on tools? A super simple flat HTML blog, you know, you know, you can't be asked with Jekyll because it is it. Jekyll, the, the thing with Jekyll, like, cause it's built in Ruby. And because all these languages have their own package manager these days, like because you ideally you want Jekyll running locally so you can test it, yeah. and then you know when it's when it's right you publish. But keeping Jekyll running 
locally in a way that gets along with the version that's running remotely is an absolute fucking pain in the ass. Yep. <laughs> so yep. just yeah. I, so when it, I when it, I set it, up, you're tired of Jekyll. This you know you just want something simple. Yeah. When, when I set up the HexDSL website, I literally installed Jekyll, set it all up. And I, I scratched my head and looked at it for about 10 minutes. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to, I literally, my thought process was, yeah, I'm just going to learn HTML. That's literally what yeah. happened. I was like, I'm going to go and yeah. read a book on HTML. I mean, I do, I, I'm a fan of Jekyll. I really like Jekyll, yeah. but I don't like how these languages have their own package managers. That's the problem. Yeah. Because then if you've got, yeah. especially if you've got like, if I've got, you know, Jekyll is, is, as a Ruby tool installed, and then I've got something else as a Ruby tool, as, Ruby tool installed, and they need different versions of the same libraries. It's like, the problems we solved in Linux like 10 years ago are now problems for these things because they're doing it the stupid way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, it's, it's a pain in the ass. So, so, I, so I'm, I'm, it was the same decision with YTP. I wanted it to depend on, I wanted it to be pure bash and not depend on anything exotic. You know, it's, it needs Pandoc. That's it. Yep. The, um, it's worth saying as well, we're not against Jekyll, like the, the XPeng yeah, no, club, club website runs on Jekyll. It's fine. We're not, you know, no criticism. It's fine. Um, it's just not the right tool for every job when you can have some, when you need something far simpler. Far, oh, far simpler. Um, so what tools did you write to make this? What did you use? What was, what was, what does it, so we know we need Pandoc, which if you don't have Pandoc installed, just install it now. It should be something that's with it. It should be something you just install as standard. Um, I think it, I think it's automatically installed on, uh, on like Ubuntu yeah. and Pop and stuff, um, and Solus. But I know it's yeah. not installed so by default. Pandoc's responsible for converting the Markdown into HTML. Yep. And the rest of it is just pure, pure, um, pure bash. I mean, you say uh, probably bash. not <laughs> POSIX compliant. I think it is bash specific. I think I use some bashisms. So, you know, if you're using FreeBSD, I don't, I don't well, know. But, you yeah, use the correct bash. tag at the top anyway. So, you know, yeah, it should be yeah. earlier anyway. Um, but yeah, and all you do is the only change you have to make in the main file is you just change the default author's Drew. So you just change the default author here. That is it. And the maximum post count as well on the main page for it archives. Um, it doesn't generate the archives until you hit that maximum post. So the archive page stays blank. And then, so if you set it to 10, when you write your 11th blog, that's when the archive begins to work. Up until that point, it's not generated, which threw me a little bit as well. I did wonder, should the archive also include the posts that are in the main list? Should it be an archive like of everything? Probably, because then people could just link to that page if they don't give a shit about your front page. Mm. So probably, mm. yeah. I think that would okay. make... There'll be a change then, I guess, in a bit, more probably. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. I think I think that probably makes sense because then if someone wants to just link to that archive page, and they don't give a shit about your social links; they just want to see your content. They could use that mm. as a live content page instead if you want. Um, mm. Yeah. But uh, is there any, okay? So error, I like the error handling here. You need Pandoc. Install it. I like why you did that rather than like rather than checking if Pandoc was installed. Oh, you, have you actually checked if Pandoc's installed? Oh no, yeah, no, it checks if oh, Pandoc's installed. Error, okay. Only echoes that if it's not installed. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, do, I, like the, do I like the error if there's no mockdown files in the mockdown error? Why don't you just create that directory? Uh, I think. He's uh... like shit. Should have just done that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, e... Well, okay, because if the directory doesn't exist then there's also going to be no markdown files in it. So even if I auto-create it, I'm still, I'm still going to have to exit and say there's nothing to yeah, do. Yeah, so you might as well get users to create themselves. So you you well, don't yeah. have to create the post directory. Though. It does create that itself, doesn't it? The post directory. Yeah, yeah. Any, anything yeah. that a anything place output related. or things it generates to go, it will, yeah. it will create. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's uh, 131 lines at the moment. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's all right. It's, it's, it's reasonable length. Apparently, if it's over yeah. 300 lines, is it over 300 lines? You should use a different language, the guide says. There's a guide yeah, that says this. I, don't, I don't agree with that. I, 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 maybe as a rule of thumb. Yeah. But I, I really like Bash. I really like writing things in Bash. Yeah. You're very tidy um, at Bash as well, aren't you? You're, you're really tidy. Look at this. Ish. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the best coder in the world. So it gets a bit, it gets a bit like I start off with a structure and then when I, oh, I need to add this feature and that feature, it just gets a bit more. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's all right. I think yeah. you're right. You did all right. You did all right. I like it. I'm, I'm, yeah. It's, uh, it's nice. I, I, yeah. I, I like it. I'm quite. I'm yeah. pleased. I'm pleased with what I'm made. And I'm I, uh, using. I think it, also as well. If anyone is, uh, if anyone is interested uh, in using this, we'll put a link in the description below the video. Obviously, that will be there. Um, you just need to search for U O O U on GitLab, and you'll find all of Drew's other projects as well, including YTP, which is YouTube YouTube Player for the command line. Um, yeah. All in all, uh, yeah. I think we've covered everything. But uh, if you do use it. Send us an email or 
comment on this video. Let us know you're using it and show us your website. We'll have a look. Or, or cool. star it on uh, on GitLab because it's nice when I, I go to YTP and it's like 11 people have starred it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, what does, they, what does the star even do? Is it just like a favorite? It's like a follow. I think it's a follow. Okay. Well, fair enough. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't use any of the features on, on GitLab. I just upload my shit and that's it. That, that's, that's my <laughs> system. Um, so thanks for watching. I love you all very much. Um, we're done. That's it. Say goodbye, Drew. I love you slightly less than Hex loves you. Yeah. Um, Patreon.com forward slash HexDSL is where you can go if you have the sudden uncontrollable urge to give me money. Bye, guys. Essentially, if you're not a monster. <laughs> Fair enough.